Hey everybody, Dr. Nelson here. Uh, this is a video about something called geometric sequences. Okay, so far you learned about arithmetic sequences. Okay, well this is like the other major concept in this unit of study. Okay, it's called geometric. All right, so what's the difference between an arithmetic sequence and a geometric sequence? Okay, so you might remember arithmetic, arithmetic sequences, okay, involve addition. All right, and there's something called a common difference. Common difference. Okay, so we could say if it's D equals five, you know the terms increase by five, okay? Well, geometric sequences, instead of dealing with addition, involves with multiplication. All right. And instead of it being called the common difference, it's now called the common ratio. All right. So again, common difference was for arithmetic sequences. Uh, common ratio is for geometric. All right. And what you need to remember is if the R value is greater than one, okay, the sequence is going to be increasing. But if the R value is less than one, okay, the sequence will be declining. Okay, we'll get more into this later on. All right, so let's take a look at this one up here on the top. So the sequence is two, six, 18, and 54. Okay, so notice there's a pretty big jump between these numbers. So that's a sign that it's geometric. So that's gonna be, uh, I believe the rule is gonna be times three, right? So times three, yep, six times three is 18. And then 18 times three is 54, okay? So to get the next number in the sequence, 54 times three gives us 162. And then if I multiply that times three, 162 times three gives us 486. And then 486 times three gives us 1,458. So the common ratio for the sequence is times three. And there it is. All right, so if you turn the page, let's now look at the differences between arithmetic se sequences and geometric, okay, when they're graphed, all right? So over here we have an arithmetic sequence that's graphed. And just a reminder, okay, this is gonna be linear. It's a nice straight line, right? So it's very pre predictable, all right? But this one over here, for a geometric sequence, notice it's not linear. It kind of makes a curve when we connect the points. All right, so arithmetic is linear and geometric is nonlinear. And those are two major characteristics of each um, type of sequence. All right, so now that you understand a little bit more about geometric sequences, why don't you pause the video and try the your turn problems. And then when you're done, hit play and you can see how you did. All right, good luck. All right, welcome back. Let's say you did with these geometric sequence problems, okay? So we need to first figure out the common ratio of each geometric sequence, right? And then fill in the missing parts of the sequence, all right? So the first one, we go from seven to 49 to 343. So, hmm, um, it looks like it's gonna be times seven. Now, the way you can check that is if I do 49 divided by seven, right? and 49 divided by seven also gives me seven. Okay, so when in doubt, take a term and divide it by the term to the left, and that will give you the common ratio. So let's see, 49 times seven is 343. So that's times seven. So the common ratio is gonna be times seven, all right? So 343 times seven would be 2,401. And then 2,401 times three gives us 16,807. And then 16,807 times three will give us a pretty big number. It's 117,649. And there it is, all right? Now the next one, if you notice, okay, the numbers are getting smaller. We're going from six to three to one and a half 
to three quarters. Okay, that means our common ratio is going to be less than one. All right, so let's see. We got to figure this out. So to go from six to three, um, we're going to be multiplying it by, I believe, a half. And the way we can, we can check that is if I do three divided by six, that's a half, right? So our common ratio is going to be times 0.5 or times a half, okay? So six times 0.5 is three. Three times 0.5 is one and a half. One and a half times uh, 0.5 is three quarters, okay? Now three quarters times a half will give us three eighths. And then the next one, three eighths times a half will give us three sixteenths. And then three sixteenths times a half will give us three over 32. And there it is.